thank you everyone for coming and joining us this evening. We're really lucky. My name is Nicola. Um, I'm the marketing manager at MediRent. And we're really lucky to be joined by Helen Eason this evening. Um, Helen is a very experienced physiotherapist with her specialty in oncology and lymphatic disorder management. She's treated many, many people with lymphedema and lipedema um, and has done an extensive research uh, into these topics. She worked at Monash Health for uh, about 11 years and then moved into private practice about eight years ago. Uh, and she's also, as if that's not busy enough, um, she's a PhD candidate currently at uh, University of Sydney, and she's researching assessment tools for lipedema, which is uh, super exciting for all of us. Um, she's presented at many conferences uh, here in Australia, New Zealand, and worldwide. So we're really lucky to have her here this evening um, and to hear some of her experience. Um, Helen, if you can just move forward one slide. Just so you all know um, that the webinar this evening is being recorded. So um, just, just in, we wanted to let you know that um, just in case if you're posting questions in the Q&A function, which we're using this evening, uh, you do have the option to post anonymously um, if you don't want your name to be shown out and to be on the recording later. Um, we won't be using the chat function tonight, just the Q&A one. So you should find that in your toolbar. You can pop a question in there. I've got some of my other team members, Sarah Shellard, who's um, our clinical advisor from New Zealand, and Jen Sanderson, our clinical advisor in Australia. Between the three of us, if there's a quick answer that we have for one of your questions, we may type it in while Helen's speaking. Uh, and any other ones, we'll try and broach as many as possible at the end of the the session this evening. We are recording it, as I said, uh, and we will post the recording onto YouTube and we'll let you know when that becomes available. I will leave you to it, Helen. Thank you very much for that very kind uh, introduction. It's absolutely wonderful to be here, being able to present this and being invited by MediRent to talk on this topic, something that I'm very passionate about, lipedema and pumps. This is very slow tonight. So just bear with us. I don't know why it's taking so long to click through, but it is. Don't we love technology? So what we're going to cover tonight is where does this compression pump treatment fit into your lipedema treatment? What the effects of the compression pump are? The compression pump prescription process? and ordering from MediRent. So we've got quite a lot to cover. So what am I talking about when I'm talking about pumps? I tend to use the word pumps because the real term sequential intermittent pneumatic compression is a bit of a mouthful and none of us can re remember that. But what it means is that sequential means we've got one chamber after another. And you can see on the video here, those chambers inflating and deflating, that those chambers are gonna sequentially inflate and deflate one after another. Intermittent, as you can see from the video there, they squeeze and release. So it's not a constant compression like a compression garment. Pneumatic, because it uses air to inflate and deflate the chambers. And compression, obviously, we're providing a set amount of pressure to the tissues, and we can alter how much pressure we give. So, I'm going to talk a little bit first about some basics of lipedema tissue. And we want to see how that's different to lymphedema tissue. So on the left, you can see your normal tissue. We've got the surface of the skin, the epidermis, the dermal layers. And within those dermal layers, we've got some blood vessels going into there. And below that, we've got the fat layer. And this is the bit with lipedema we're really interested in. And in that fat layer, you can see the red running through. So we've got blood vessels running through, but we've also got lymphatic vessels in our fatty tissue. Now, most of you out there with lipedema will know that lipedema is actually uh, hypertrophy. So that means that the fat cells are bigger than normal fat cells. And you can see that on the diagram on the right. And a hyperplasia, there's more of them. But there's also differences in the fluid within the fat. We've got free fluid, which is fluid 
um, between the fat cells in the extracellular spaces. And we've also got something that people don't talk about a lot. We've got some bound fluid. And this is a different concept to what most people understand. It's fluid that's attached to your gags. Now, gags means your glycosaminoglycan chain. And again, it's a mouthful, so we call it the gags, which is actually stuck and bound and connected to the fat cells. And this is quite a new concept. You can see there the paper we're citing is 2020. And there's a lot of um, people around the world who are out there saying there's no fluid in lipedema. Um, especially a big group in Europe. But what we do know from one of the papers that's been published in 2020 is that there is fluid in the fat. 100% of you that have got lymphedema and lipedema will have fluid in your fat. But those of you that have no lymphedema at all, you have pure lipedema, 18.7% of pure lipedema patients have some fluid in the fat. So not everybody, but it's there. The one thing we do know about lipedema is that there's lots of inflammation there. This is a painful fat condition. And this is a bit of a busy slide. Um, this is from the JWC in, um, consensus document that came out of Europe. And they're a big believer that the pain you have um, is because of inflammation in your fat tissue. So you can see the normal fat tissue on the left. And in the middle, we've got some uh, different chemical names put there. These are called adipokines and they're inflammatory substances that we know about. And one is called TNF-alpha. On the right, we can see some more of those. The IL stands for interleukins. And there's some other names as well. But be aware that we know now that TNF-alpha and interleukins are there in your, around your fat cells inflamed. And they cause a lot of pain. They're called adipokines, they're inflammatory. And what happens is some little blood vessel, uh, blood vessels, sorry, white blood cells come into the area called macrophages. They're the little green guys there. You can see in the middle picture are starting to come in. And on the picture of the right, they're really coming into the tissue. And there's signs that there's inflammation within your fatty tissue with lipedema. And that's what causes the pain, not particularly fluid, more inflammation. And that's how lipedema and lymphedema are two separate conditions. So you may have three diseases to tackle. You may have lipedema. You may also have some secondary lymphedema. And that might be, we're not quite sure if it's secondary to the lipedema process or secondary to having some obesity, but it's secondary lymphedema. And you also may have a third disease, which is tummy fat, central fat gain, not to do with the legs and not to do with the arms. And we know that's different fat, that's obesity fat. And this lady's showing that she's got three diseases going on there at the same time. So we have to have this multifaceted approach to your treatment. We've got three different diseases with three different processes. So it needs a lot of different things to manage it. Now we know that early and effective self-management is what we really want, but it's never too late with lipedema to make a change in your tissues and start your treatment. And what we're trying to do with this holistic approach is tackle it from many aspects. We want to improve your lymphatic flow, reduce your inflammation, which will then help you manage your pain better, we want you to be undertaking a healthy diet and exercise. Now, this is very important. This is one of the key things I want to get over tonight is a lot of websites, a lot of chat rooms are saying diet and exercise don't work. We know that they do now. That's a whole nother uh, webinar to do, but please don't give up on your healthy diet and exercise. For those of you who are very traumatized by what's happened to you, that your body is giving you... Um, self-image problems, we need to get you some psychosocial and emotional support. Try and boost your self-esteem. And the other thing that people, again, don't talk about a lot is improving the fibrosclerosis in your adipose tissue. So if you've had lipedema for a long time, that prolonged inflammation will cause some scar tissue within your lipedema tissue, and it gets more nodular, more hardened up. And if we can improve that, then we can get the flow through that tissue a lot better. And if we can get the flow through the tissue better, the fluid can be removed from the tissue and that will help everything. 
and it will also help reduce your inflammation if you can get your blood flow through your tissue better. So where pumps come in is that they help improve lymphatic flow. We know that from the lymphedema world. They'll help the um, blood flow through your tissues so it can help reduce your inflammation and help you manage your pain. And we can help break down that fibrosclerosis within your fatty tissue. So it's got a three pronged approach, adding a pump into your treatment. So we want to flush through that painful adipose tissue and get that inflammation down. So it's going to help that. And the lymphedema, we now know as well from a lot of studies, if we find lymphedema in lipedema, it mainly occurs below the knees and in the feet. So we want to try and move that lymphedema more centrally towards your body so that your lymphatics can take that away. Another thing we know at the moment is that your lymphatics tend to start out pretty normal compared to lymphedema patients. And it's actually a functional overload of those the lymphatics that causes the lymphedema. So we want them to function better. And even moving fluid from a non-functioning area into a more functional area will help. So shunting it up the legs into a better area, maybe from below the knee to the tops of the legs where your lymphatics are working better. I use pumps a lot after liposuction. So those ladies who are going off to see the surgeons to have some liposuction, I use pumps then to try and get the inflammation and the edema, the swelling down that happens after that invasive procedure. As I've said, we use it to try and break up that scar tissue in the adipose tissue. And I'm going to talk later about putting inserts into your um, pump to try and do that. So it's adding something in to try and help that breakdown. And if we attack all those things I've just spoken about, that you're going to feel better. And because you feel better, the pain's gone down, the swelling's gone down. It's not as hardened tissue. You can move better. And if you can move better, you're going to exercise more. And if you can move better, you're going to be able to put on your garments more. So although when people don't think of that improvement, we're going to help you function and lipedema, sorry, pumps can help lipedema patients eventually be able to do these things better. So I'm into research. I'm doing a PhD. I like facts and figures. And what we know is that from pumps and lymphedema, there is lots of research. And we know for lymphedema that compression garments, pumps and exercises are beneficial for moving that free fluid. Now, if you look on the diagram on the right, you're going to see a lot of question marks because the research is showing that there's a lot of things actually aren't doing what we thought they did. And one of the big ones I want to point out is MLD, manual lymphatic drainage. There's been a paper very recently, which has been seen as quite controversial in our world because they've actually found that a lot of the MLD techniques, when they've looked at it, whether it's VODA, FALDI, the new fluoroscopy guided MLD, they don't actually move as much free fluid as we thought. Sure, they're given a treatment effect and people find benefit from them, but when they actually measured fluid with it, it wasn't as good, but they found it with pumps. So I've always loved pumps. I've used them for a long, long time. I think they're a great addition to your toolbox, but this new research is showing us that maybe the pumps have got even more use with um, edema management than MLD. Um, when we get to look at bound fluid, it's very difficult to measure at the moment, but we think we can move it um, pretty well by using some massage techniques. And that's when we can adapt your pump treatment to try and get that to move some bound treatment as well. A lot of things we don't know, there's a lot of question marks there and there's a lot of little dashes because the evidence is just not good enough. What about pumps and lipedema? Like everything in lipedema, less evidence on this. Solnocki did a paper in 2008, so that's considered quite an old paper now, but it was a, a good trial. He split the patients up into two groups. Those with lipedema went off and um, all of them went off and had bandaging, exercise and skin care. So they were already getting some good um, lymphatic treatment there. But in one group, they had VODA MLD for 60 minutes. And the other group, they only had 30 minutes of MLD, but he added in a pump for 30 minutes. 
Now, something I want you to take note of is that that pump treatment was only 30 millimetres of mercury. You're going to see from this presentation, we use higher pressures. And I think that lower pressure that he used was the reason why these results were gained. I think we he should redo this study. So both groups significantly reduced in volume. Amazing. But there was no difference between the groups. So one wasn't better than the other. So what we could say is that we knew by the end of this that 30 minutes pump treatment was an, is effective as 30 minutes fodder MLD. So this was the paper that said with lipedema, pumps are safe and they didn't have any side effects. Because lipedema is much more painful than lymphedema, the worry was that we'd be causing people pain by having that sequential squeezing action, but they didn't. They, they could tolerate 30 millimeters of mercury. So that's the, the study that's out there, as good as MLD. Now, you're probably starting to hear all this good evidence and thinking, oh, I quite fancy using a pump. Medirent are very adamant that they would like you to have a therapist supporting you in getting a pump and assessing whether it's appropriate for you. So you should have a, a therapist who's experienced in lipedema assessing you, and they should be having a look, if they can, at your fluid content. Now, I'm very lucky. I've got access to some great gadgets because of my research. So I have access to something called a, a moisture meter. There's a modern one called the lymph scanner that can take fluid measurements through your skin. And I've got access to something called bioimpedance that can really look at your total body water and the lymphatic component of it, what we call the extracellular fluid. So if you're looking for a therapist, it's good to look for somebody who's got those tools. But I know we're not all in a city where people maybe have the tools. You may be more rural and th those therapists don't tend to have as many tools because they don't see as many lipedema and lymphedema patients. They can measure your leg volume to see if it goes up and down. We can all measure function. Things, things like the six minute walk test are really good to see what you're functioning at and if that improves. And your skin condition, how nodular is something, how smooth is your skin. We can measure your pain on a visual analog scale. And we can write down what you tell us. Patient self-report's important, but we need to back that up with some facts and figures as well. And they can have a look at what your limb contour is like and what the shape's like. But we should also be assessing whether you've got some obesity there. And that's when we do our waist hip ratios and our waist height ratios to try and work out what's the bigger problem. Is it the lipedema or is it actually the tummy, the central obesity that we can definitely do something about? So you've been to your therapist, you've got your measures done and you're going to try and start having a pump treatment to see what it does for you. So what I'm going to cover now is the products that MediRent have and their garment coverage. How we consider your pressures, where do we start? Talk about custom made and how to measure for that, for those who need it. And pumping over the inserts about breaking down that fibrosclerosis. So do we choose trousers or do we choose the leg garments? So MediRent have two products. The first one is the biocompression trousers. Now, some people see the trousers and they find that a bit scary. They don't want to be in the trousers all the way up. You don't have to. We're going to talk about the LX9 in a moment. But those trousers come in many, many sizes. They have got eight chambers on each leg, so a total of 16 chambers. And you can get them custom made. So the lady's holding up one of the custom made garments for a bigger leg that doesn't fit in the standard sizes. The LX9 can come in two portions. We normally start with the legs. There is the abdominal part, which is the picture in the middle. The lady at the bottom has got the leg garments on and each have four chambers. So that's when you're um, looking at both sides of the abdomen or two legs, we're looking at eight chambers and it looks a little bit different. So if you're not used to compression, you might think I'm not going in those pants yet. It, it, it's a bit much to start with. So you could maybe just cover one region. And that's what I do with a lot of my ladies is start them on the LX9 with the legs. And then 
You could always add another LX9 re region, which is the trunk garment. If you feel you need treatment over the buttocks, um, the upper legs and the lower abdomen. And then if you find that comfortable, you can try the all-in-one biocompression pants. And if needs to, there's custom made. Now, for any treatment, the effect of the abdomen is really, really important. We're back to our lady here who's got some um, lipedema, some lymphedema, but she's got some central obesity in the tummy as well. And when that tummy hangs down and presses, you can see the compression of the stomach against where the lymph nodes of the groin are in. And that's not good. That could be actually preventing some flow through those groin lymphatic nodes. So what we want to do is actually lift the tummy up away and create space around your groin where those lymph nodes are. And how we do that is a lot of you have got um, the very gentle compression garments out there, Bioflect, CZ Salus, to, that are gentle enough um, to not cause too much compression on the legs and support the legs, but they're going to give enough lift in the tummy. And that can really be helpful under your garment. Now, the pressure that we use, we're going to start um, to look at the starting point. I'm going to give you some case studies about how we use pressure with the ladies. And we're going to talk about, for those of you who are in a lot of pain and you're thinking, I don't even know if I could tolerate this, how we use the pumps to desensitize the tissues with lipedema and the patterns of pressure that we can use. So this is our LX9 machine. What, we've, what we know from the literature um, on lymphedema and what I know from clinical experience working with lipedema is many patients can start at 40 millimeters of mercury. It's a good pressure. We know it's safe for your lymphatics. It's comfortable for most of our patients and it's effective. So we need to be aware that you can go higher and you can go lower by changing the dial on the LX9 machine. So what we do is when a patient comes to me, I'll pop them on my LX9 and see how they feel. And I'll just start them. If they're not too sensitive in their tissues, I'll try 40. We let the sleeves blow up. And when the sleeve is firm, we've got to assess, is it tight enough? Is it firm enough? And is it comfortable? So as you can see on the diagram on the right in the green, yes, when it's fully inflated, it feels firm enough. Great, we maintain that pressure. If you say, oh no, actually, I'm quite surprised. It could be tighter. We can increase the pressure by 10 millimeters of mercury. And likewise, if you think, oh no, that's too tight. That causes me pain. We're gonna decrease the pressure by 10 millimeters of mercury. Now, what we do from that starting point is we don't just keep turning it up and up and up and up and up. Because it's all right having sometimes one squeeze. Sometimes though multiple squeezes over time can be a little bit more uncomfortable. So I, what I get everybody to do is allow the device to run for 10 minutes on that setting. And then we reassess. So I never leave my patients alone for their first pump treatment. We're talking about things for that 10 minutes and how to hire and what's involved. And then we reassess after about 10 minutes, say, how are you going? How's that pressure feeling? And that's when we can maybe try and increase it or whether you say, actually, it was all right when you first put it up. But now after a while, you're right. It's, it's not as uncomfortable. I don't like it. OK, we turn it down again. So that's the first session. We'll get to know what pressure is right for you. It's really easy to, to change the pressure by using the dial. And generally, my patients come in and they'll spend they have an hour with me, so it might be they're on the machine for about 40 minutes. Um, if I can get them on an hour, that's great. And then we're gonna reassess, has it been an effective session? So what we're looking for is, is there actual change? Not just, oh, it feels nice, I like that. Um, that's not effective. We need to see it's actually making a medical change to you. So are your contours of your lipedema actually changing? Has something that looked really full and swollen, has it gone down? Does it look different? Is something that looked very tense, looking a bit more soft and jelly-like? Have you actually lost volume? And sometimes the first thing my ladies say when they hop off 
And I say, have a stand up and what do you feel like? They go, oh, my legs feel so much lighter. Some patients get a little bit obsessed that the must we after MLD or the must we after a um, pump treatment. Some patients do get a urine output increase and they'll go to the toilet. But you've got to put that into context. If you've just had half a litre of water before you got to your appointment and then you're on the pump for an hour, it might be just that. So it's, it's assessing, are we always getting a bit of urine output? And it doesn't mean the treatment's failed if you don't have increased urine output. It's more about the texture, the softness, the volume reduction, what it feels like. I can see a change. I can measure a change. And do you function better afterwards? So it might be that it doesn't look much better, but you can get up and down the stairs better afterwards. You can stand out the chair better. You can stand for longer. The box on the right there, we're looking that your treatment has to be comfortable. It's really, really important that it's not uncomfortable. People think they've got to just keep whacking the pressure up higher and higher to get a better response. And that's not the case. When we're in pain, our body goes into the sympathetic nervous system mode, fight or flight, we tense up. And we know that our lymphatics do not like the sympathetic nervous system. They don't respond well to cortisol and stress and pain. So we want it to be comfortable for you because we want you to relax and get more of that parasympathetic nervous system dominating, which we know lymphatics work better in. So uncomfortable treatment is ineffective treatment. The pressure is either too high, you might have the speed on too fast, or you might be sitting on it far too long. Comfortable is good, but comfortable can be ineffective too. If you, it's lovely and comfortable, but you get off, and like I've said, there's no contour change, your limb doesn't look or feel different, it's not effective. So you may have your pressure too low, your speed may be too low, or if you just hopped on for 10 minutes, your duration might be too short. You've got to let the pump repeat over and over again in the cycle for it to work really well. So your effective treatment is comfortable with a change, and that's a good balance of settings. So if you don't get any change for, and you put the pressure up and up and up, you may have no edema left to clear. And that's when we need to review things. Do we really still need it? Has it done its job? Or can we still change things up? There is no treatment recipe. That's why you need a therapist because we have to tailor your settings to your individual presentation and we need to keep reviewing it. Don't just keep on the same setting for the rest of your life to make sure it's effective and that we keep testing it for your pain, swelling and inflammation. You will, however, find you get to a maximum pressure that's comfortable and effective. You don't need to progress that. I have heard ladies coming in and saying, especially on some of the chat rooms for lipedema and the social media groups, that some women out there are using immense pressures, ridiculously high pressures. I don't know their circumstance and why they're doing it, they need a therapist monitoring them. Some people do come in believing you've just got to turn it up and up. And we need to review settings if things change in your life. So you might have a new medical problem. You might get an infection in your skin known as cellulitis, which is, can be common in lymphedema. Or you might suddenly have a new joint pain or ache in your ankle or your knee. Why the um, LX9 is really good. You'll see there the picture of the leg on it, which says skip care. We can press any of those buttons and switch one of the areas off. So that's really helpful. If you've had a recent knee injury, you can switch the knee channel off or the ankle channel off. And I'm going to talk about a case study in a minute where I did that to be alert to allow this lady to get onto some treatment. So low pressure. We're using a lower pressure if you're well-maintained volume with your compression garments. You haven't got a lot of fluid there to start with. Maybe you've got little fluid, but you still have some pain and sensitivity. So we're treating the pain aspect. You respond quickly to the treatment and your aim is inflammation management. Higher pressures, they're the cases where you have got lymphedema and it's hardened up and that's the main problem. 
or maybe your shape isn't well maintained and your volume isn't maintained with your other compression tools like your compression gar garments because of the size and shape. Or you've got large amounts of stagnant fluid, which looks like orange peel skin. So in the in the lymphedema world, we call that peau d'orange after the French orange peel skin. And this is one of my lippy ladies who in her lobes around her knee, you can see some dots there. And that's this peau d'orange. There's so much fluid in those tissues and it's hardened up. It's really stretching those pores and giving that very dimpled orange peel look. And we put some inserts in her um, pump to try and break that down. So that's what peau d'orange looks like, where you've got localized stagnant lymphatic fluid. So onto our case studies. This is my first case study. In, she's a young lady in my eyes, and she's done incredibly well with her lipedema. Look at that waist. She hasn't developed a tummy at all. She's been really good following um, a low carb diet for a long, long time in her life, even before low carb diets have been shown to help lipedema. She also has postural ortho orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, which unfortunately gives her a low blood pressure and makes it really difficult for her to put a class two compression garments on as she gets incredibly dizzy and it gives her a lot of fatigue. She, her main issue to, and why we try to use the pump is even though she's amazing and she uses some pro skin garments and has normal moisture meter readings and a normal LDEX on her so, so telling me there's not a lot of free fluid there, she still has this constant nagging in her legs. She doesn't call that pain. She says it's just discomfort, a constant nagging, and she gives it a three to four out of 10. She still has sensitivity of her tissues when we do the pinching test. She actually gets some, what she calls pain, but very intermittently, and a lot of restless leg syndrome. So we decided to put a pump in because she struggles with that, getting into that class two garment. That's really what we would want to do with her is get a compression garments a bit firmer to see if it would help with that residual symptoms, but she gets too dizzy. So at the pump it was. Now she went into the bio pants. We tried her in the clinic. She tolerated it really well. So she, she went home and for a month she did an hour. At 50, you can see straight away she's left the clinic. She's managing a, um, a good speed and a little bit of a higher pressure, no problem, 50 millimeters of mercury because she's not got huge um, pain there. Now, after the month, her pain went down that nagging to two out of 10 instead of three to four out of 10. So a little bit of a shift, not massive, but she said she didn't have any more of these pain episodes that she was having intermittently. When I did a pinch test, there was absolutely no sensitivity on the tissues anymore. And even though we weren't going for it as an outcome, because her pain had been less um, and her sensitivity had been less, she'd felt what well, she wanted to do a bit more exercise and she'd gone and exercised a bit more and not been quite as dizzy because another um, thing that this, the pump does is move the circulation into the center. So that would help her pot syndrome as well. And because she could exercise, she lost 1.7 kilos of fat and put on 900 grams of muscle when I put her on my sozo bioimpedance. And interestingly, both of her circumferences of her ankles had reduced one half a centimetre after a month and one 0.7 um, centimetres. And we weren't looking for volume reduction for her, but she got it. And we were surprised by that. And we're not sure if that's the exercise effect or she's lost a little bit of bound fluid there. I can't, I like to say I need a measurement of bound fluid um, a little bit better because I would love to try and prove some of these theories that I have. Now, this second case study, I want to point out that this is not her picture on the left. Unfortunately, we've not been able to get one in time. I've looked on the internet and found from a website, a picture of legs that looks similar to my lovely lady's legs. So she's another type three lipedema, a little bit older this time, she's 74. Um, and she came to me, she's already had two liposuction um, episodes of surgery on her legs, but way before we got the special lipedema type of liposuction. So one was just cosmetic surgery in the late nineties. 
the second in 2012. And after that second surgery, she was given some compression, but unfortunately the surgeons provided her with what we call round knit, circular knit um, stockings, which aren't the best for lipedema because they cut in. And because of that, and the, the material with the round knit is, makes you more hot and sweaty, she hates stockings. She's got peripheral vascular disease, which is common with lipedema. So she's had some vein work done on her left leg and she's still got evidence of veins on her left leg and has bilateral um, spider veins, what we call ankle flare and varicosities there. And she's had high blood pressure, but it's controlled. She came to me, she said, I'm not in pain, but I want to see what else can be done for the fluid. She has very nodular fatty thighs, um, about a stage two. I don't like stages, but as you can see from the picture, we're talking about a stage two. But below her knees, around the fat pads below her knees, um, very firm, tense swelling. One millimetre when I pressed on it, and we, we press on it and see if it makes an indent called pitting. She had about a millimetre on the right shin and she had pitting edema again, a millimetre at both ankles, and she was known to have feet swelling in the heat. Other lipedema treatments she's doing, she's trying some turmeric and resveratrol supplements to see if those antioxidants will help um, a lipedema. She's a, she's a really great patient. She's doing Kaiser or Kiza two to three times a week, which is a special gym program. And she's walking 30 minutes, two to three times a week. And because of that, she has a low BMI. I haven't got pictures to show you what her tummy's like, but I can tell you she doesn't have a big tummy. She's got a lower BMI, 31.6. So she was really keen to see if the pump would help instead of garments. She did not want the pants. She was one of the ladies who comes in and says, no, ch no chance, I'm not getting in that. I don't feel ready for that at the minute. That looks a bit scary to me. So I said, that's okay, we'll get the LX9 out. And because again, she's pain free, she could leave the clinic on 50. We tried her on 60, she felt that was a little bit heavy. So she left on 50, speed four. So it's about a midway speed for an hour. And after that first treatment, she got off and she said, oh, my legs feel so much lighter. And the pitting I'd had earlier in that session, it, the right ankle and the shin had gone, but not the left ankle. So she said, yeah, I'm gonna hire it for a month. And I definitely don't want the pants, I'll stick to the leg garments. Now, she was meant to have it for a month, but due to illness, she came back after two months. And this is what she told me, she was astounded. She really thought she wasn't sure if this was going to work. Um, she said, my, my swelling is so much reduced and my legs at the top and the thighs are much less nodular and hard. And it was really, we'd given it to her more for the lower legs. What she was specifically thrilled with is that her fat pads around her knees and especially that left knee had really gone down in size, she said, and one had dimples in. She was she whipped her trousers off so fast to show me these dimples. She said, I can't believe it. And she was picking up the skin saying, look at all this wrinkling of the skin on that left knee and left leg pad. So I said, well, I like to prove that. That's what you say, let's have a look. And this is some of the data that I've got for her. So the top data is from my Sozo. And she actually has on her left and her right leg, her LDEX are in the normal re region. They were before we started. But what we can see is that they have actually reduced in those two months a little bit. We weren't expecting that because she was in the normal already. Her total body water, she's lost 800 mils. And that extracellular fluid, the lymphatic one, the one we don't like, that free fluid has gone down 500 mils. So a cold can and a half. Then I got my tape measure out. And what we found on the right leg was that around her toes, she'd gone down nearly two centimeters on that foot swelling. And on her shin, her ankle and her shin, one centimeter and 0.9, so nearly a centimeter there. On her left foot, she'd lost 1.4 centimeters. And right up from her ankle, right to her knee on that left leg. And remember that was the one that still had the varicose veins. She's lost up to 1.7 centimetres there, 1.1, 1 1.7, 1 1.4 and 1. Big differences. 
but something we weren't expecting where she had non-pitting edema in the thigh, she's gone down two centimeters, 2.2, 1.2. And on the left leg, not as many, but she's got one measurement that's gone down 1.8 centimeters. So she's lost a lot of volume on her legs and that's why she was so thrilled. So there's the data. I might not have a photo, but I've got plenty of data on that case study. So what do we do with her? We review her treatment outcomes. What should we be doing? Has she plateaued? Is that as good as she can get? Is it the best outcome? Or do we really need to review our settings? Or do we add inserts? Do we try and break up some more fibros, um, sclerotic tissue? So I'm gonna talk now about this magic pumping over inserts. And what I do it for is that thickened lymphedema. Remember the peau d'orange you saw? And for ladies with that nodular fat where the inflammation has been there so long, it's created scar tissue throughout your fatty tissue, scar tissue around each little um, fat cell called your adipocyte and through the tissue itself. Fibrosis and fibrosclerosis. And this is one of the reasons we do know that you can progress with lipedema is once that fibrosis is going there, the fluid can't get through, it gets stuck. So it gets stuck and it hardens up and it causes more fibrosclerosis and um, you go round and round in that vicious circle. We want to try and prevent that happening. But if it's happened for you, we want to try and reverse it. Now, these are some products you can do. This is the Lymphies from Lymphedema Supply Company. Um, and there's two. There's a, a softer one, but I love the stronger one because it's got really heavy duty foam in it. It's the firmest one on the market. So it's one of my favorite go to's um, if you really got firm nodular legs and not much pain to break it up. Another heavy duty one's the Jovi pack, and that's actually got cherry pits in it. So it's pretty hardcore. I know a lot of patients can't tolerate it. Um, so it's a pretty hardcore one, but if you've got very stubborn fibrosclerosis, very stubborn edema that needs breaking down, it's, it's gold, we love it. Jovi pack actually do a softer one, and that's a shaped one that can go around the back of your ankle, because we know that around the ankle, those fat pads can be um, very persistent and need a bit of work. So that's the ankle shaped one. This is a lovely product. It's actually a night garment for lymphedema called um, a Comfy Wave by Hadnams, but I use it under pumps as well. Um, and it's got a cloth one compression in it. It's very, very stretchy. And it's got, you can see this one's not like a chunky pattern. This is a linear pattern to try and get the flow up towards the lymph nodes. Another linear product is the Juzo Soft Compress. Um, that's a very soft product. Swell spots are a soft product to go a bit like the Jovi pack on areas. They come in all shapes and sizes. But unlike the Jovi pack, which has the cherry pits in, these are a lot softer and they're made by Solaris. I think a lot of you are, uh, know that this is Moby Doom. Moby Doom comes in rolls. It also comes in ready to make, um, sorry, custom made garments. Um, and it's one of the softest products on the market. So if you have got pain, you can start with something very soft. And if you want to go firmer, now you might have learned some options of things to go firmer. And some of you have the textured garments, the Bioflect and the CZ Salis. They, with the pump, they press in deeper as well. So you could wear those and pump over those garments um, to give that texturing. And if you've got pain, to start gently. You don't have to go hardcore like with the Lymphies um, or the Jovi pack. You can start gentle and build up to it. Now, some of you are thinking, not on your life. I've got far too much pain. I can't even think about putting something on hard with deep pressure. Some of you need to be desensitized. Um, so if you've got a lot of pain, we start very, very low. We find the pressure that's comfortable to you, and it may be just 20 millimeters of mercury. And we run some daily treatments of that. And the time we start gentle and build up, see what you can do and aim for up to an hour. And what we're doing, remember, is flushing through those adipokine, those irritant chemicals, those inflammatory chemicals out of your fatty tissue to see if we can get your pain down. So be patient, take it slowly and aim that you can get the pump on at 20 pain-free. 
And then we use that progression table in the circular diagram that we used is progress the pressure, try it 10 millimeters of mercury higher, review your comfort and effect. Okay. And when your treatment is comfortable and effective, remember you don't have to keep turning it up and up and up. So we're monitoring with your therapist, the pressing on the legs, the pinching tests, and you can do that yourself. It's not rocket science to see, oh, I, I can pinch myself. Oh, the, the cat walked across my legs today and it didn't hurt for the first time. Or, oh, one of the kids jumped on me and it wasn't quite as agonizing. That's what we were reviewing to see if it's improving. And this lady did have very sensitive legs. This is my third and final case study for the, this evening. This is my lovely lady, 64 year old, again with type three lipedema, but she has the full triad. She's got lipedema, she's got obesity. You can see there from the size, the shape and how her tummy hangs down. She's got central obesity and she's got lymphedema as well. Other medical problems, my lady, poor lady has on, if that's not enough, polymyalgia rheumatica. Um, it's an inflammatory joint disorder. And when she came to see me, she was having terrible problems with her ankle joints, separate to the pain from a lipedema. She struggled with her weight for a long time. She actually had a stom stomach stapled in 1982. Because her whole body is full of pain at the minute, they're um, querying fibromyalgia. I'm gonna come back to that. You might disagree by the end. I don't think she's got fibromyalgia at all. I think she's got lipedema. And she's got diverticulitis. So that's something to take into account when you've got a problem with your tummy, you may not want to put the bio pants on because it's gonna squeeze the tummy and you don't want that with diverticulitis. So she came in, as many of you can um, associate with severe pain and leg sensitivity. And on top of all of that, she's a carer for a mum with dementia and her husband. She tries to go to hydro. She's been finding it incredibly difficult with her ankle joints recently. And really, it, it, it's all taken a toll on her mental health. She's given up. She was very down. She said, I just can't move anymore. My whole body is painful. She has obesity, so she does have a high BMI. Her waist hip ratio shows us, if the picture doesn't, that she has the central obesity is actually the bigger problem than the lipedema at the moment. It's, it's um, much larger in volume. And on my sozo, you can see a weight and the amount of fat in her body there. It's, it's um, considerable. But considering all of this, spider veins only, amazing. But she does have very sensitive legs to touch all over. So we decided to try the, um, the poke. She did not want to go into compression garments because of her ankles. There was no way she was going to get them on and off at all. So we went into the LX9 and this is where we turned off channel one around the ankle because of her ankle polymyalgia rheumatica. So she could still go in the pump even though her ankles were so painful. And after a session with me, starting at 20, going to 30, going to 40, by the end of the hour, she managed 50. She couldn't believe it. And she took it for a month. And when she came back, she had no tissue sensitivity or pain in her fatty tissue in her legs. Now, she still has some pain elsewhere in her body and it's more her joints. Do I think this lady has fibromyalgia? No, she's got polymyalgia rheumatica with lipedema. She doesn't have that whole body pain in her legs um, anymore. And her ankles were no worse for it. And amazingly, because the first time she ever went on this, when we say about assessing function, she hopped after the first one and went, yep, yeah, I want to hire this. This is amazing. And she said after we had a bit of a chat, she went, oh, my God, I can't remember the last time I've stood for this long just after being on this machine. So functionally amazing. Other outcomes um, after the month where her weight had dropped significantly. Now, she did start doing a low carb diet at the same time. So we can't say it's all due to the pump. We wish you could, it's not that much of a miracle, but she'd lost 4.2 kilos of fat, 4.5 of total body water. Um, so 9.3 kilos in total, but off her knees in particular, she'd lost nine centimeters off her left knee and 6.1 off her right, which she was thrilled with because she could walk better with those knee pads being smaller. Her skin was much more soft, less nodular. 
She'd lost five centimeters off her waist, four off her hips. Look, the pump only went up to her thighs. That's a diet. But she was able um, to say my legs are much less painful. Now, the ankle still stopped her moving. The ankle still stopped compression garments. So we kept the pump going. And recently, I just saw her last week, she's managed to get some injections into her ankles. So she's like a new woman with those ankles and she is off and moving. So we're loving that. And we've decided because she's doing so well and it's stayed so stable for so long with the sensitivity and the reduction, we're actually not going to do an hour every day. We might try an hour every other day with her because I want her now exercising and moving and living again and not having our legs dominate her life. So this is when we, you need a therapist to help decide what to do. I'd rather have her off that pump for an hour every other day and go and do some great exercise to help work on her strength and her function, her weight, and her mood, and get her moving again. Some of you may look at those pictures and think I'm bigger than that. We can get custom made. That's the process there. So if you're thinking I need custom made, see if you can rent the best fit, fit option. If you've got lots of secondary lymphedema there, reduce that first with your therapist with some intensive pump use, and then order your custom made. Don't order a custom made and then find after reduction you need to order a second custom made that's too costly the other option is when you've reached your plateau measure for your custom sizing and once you've got that order in from your therapist for your custom made continue with your pump while you wait for your garment to arrive and then you can send your stock sized ones back to MediRent when your custom arrived now, if there's any, I know there's actually some therapists online. When you're doing the measurement, send a photo as well so that we can, they can see exactly the shape of the lipedema legs and measure straight. So your leg lengths do not um, contour your tape measure around the curves and the contours. Do a straight vertical measurement um, for the knee, the floor to knee, and the, the heel to groin, okay? That's really important. Same for the abdomen, straight line. Now, many of the ladies do have a tummy. That's quite challenging because um, you don't want to contour it around the tummy. So measure from the side on, from the top of the thigh to the upper abdomen. So you're not actually measuring over the tummy and that will give you really good um, fit. I'm going to hand over to Nicola now and Nicola is going to talk you through um, MediRent Learning Hub service and referral process. So over to Nick. Great. Thanks, Helen. I may just need you to change the slides for me because you're in control of that. No problem. <laughs> so, no problem at all. Have a look at the first one, uh, which is going to be about the Learning Hub. So for the clinicians that are um, listening tonight. We do have a learning hub. I know many of you are familiar with that. Um, it's our online platform where we're able to share information like this uh, and more and um, summaries of research articles and different case studies we have and that sort of thing. For all the um, end users and people with lipedema on the line tonight, unfortunately, we can't give you access to this. Um, according to Australian law, as a um, device supplier, we are not able to provide direct clinical information to patients, but we can do something like this evening's webinar where Helen is able, <clears throat> excuse me, to share her clinical knowledge with you. Um, uh, so, uh, yeah, for the therapists there, uh, it's simply a matter of um, signing up and then we just accept your login um, according to your details about being a clinician. Uh, next slide, Helen. Great. So just a little bit about us um, in summary is that we are based in Australia and New Zealand. I know there's a couple of Kiwis on tonight, which is great. And we have Sarah, as I said, um, listening in and answering questions like mad I can see on the Q&A. Uh, and she's uh, our um, 
a business development manager who's based um, just out of Wellington. And we have an office and a warehouse in Auckland to get equipment to you. Uh, as Helen has mentioned, we do do a rent try buy. Um, it is really great to be able to rent um, for as little as a month, because in that month you get a good idea as to whether it's going to work for you. I know there was some questions around garment sizing. Uh, and so sometimes what people do is they will rent um, a standard size of garment, they might get a reduction in their leg size, uh, and then go on to buy a custom garment once they've sort of hit that maintenance phase. So it's, it's a good way to do things. Uh, and you get three months rental off that purchase price um, at that point. There are some funding options available. I have listed here NDIS and DVA, they're Australian ones. Uh, there are a couple of New Zealand groups as well that will help with the funding. Um, as I've said, my background is occupational therapy. Um, Sarah and Jan are both lymphedema therapists um, and we've got nurses on our staff as well. So we are able to give good clinical support, mostly to our practitioners that we work for who are then supporting you guys, the end users. We're open seven days, believe it or not, on the phones. Uh, so we always pretty close at hand if you've got a question or you're having a problem with your uh, equipment at, at all. Uh, and yeah, I think, you know, I think our systems are pretty affordable. Um, it is really tricky. We understand that, that um, managing a chronic health condition uh, just often includes a lot of dollars. Um, but, you know, when you add up your times going to your therapist and being able to use the pump daily, um, it, it's a pretty good equation. Uh, next slide, Helen. Right, so for the clinicians, again, online, uh, we do have a referral system where we have some referral forms. They're on our website. They're on the Learning Hub. We can send you copies. Um, so if you're referring a patient, we'd like you to fill those out. If you're an end user, we do say, please use a clinician. You will get a much better experience um, having that educated person along for the ride with you to guide you and mentor you of how the pump is going to fit into your overall treatment regime um, and to you know help you figure out what settings are best for you if you don't have a clinician I know there's a couple of people rural people who have reached out in the Q&A um, we don't say no um, so there is definitely opportunity to rent or buy directly from us so you simply con contact customer service they'll ask you for a couple of limb measurements um, and then we go from there but for the clinicians um, we are saying just try and be as specific as possible with those settings um, try not to put a range on there, you know, oh, 40 to 60 mils of mercury. Um, because if we set the pump up specifically for your patient, we need a very exact figure um, for the technicians who are setting it up and they're not uh, mind readers. Uh, so start, so just write down what your first settings are, where you want to start your patient. Uh, and then, and then it's about talking to the patient about how you want to develop that treatment and increase or change those settings. Uh, but for everyone online, um, we provide a manual, we provide a quick guide um, and a general settings guide to try and help you navigate. And um, Helen had some of those screen snaps up on her slides about how you can uh, experience the pump and then make changes to the settings according to that experience. Um, yeah. Uh, next slide. I can't remember what we've got. Right. Summary. That can be you, Helen. <laughs> <laughs> so can see here I'm just going to put my light on next to me because I can see that the light is fading rapidly now in Albert so just bear with me give me a bit more light so yes in summary I love pumps I've loved pumps for a long time for exactly what Nick has just said they're a great tool for your toolbox for self-management remember what it showed about MLD um, MLD we know doesn't have the fluid effect that we thought it did and certainly MLD is really costly to go and have. And this is something you can put on yourself every day at home, which is really good and use it when you need to. And you can, some patients use it and put it back. So it's got lots and lots of uses. It's in summary, it is um, flushing out your adipose tissue of your adipokines. It is removing your free fluid. It is breaking up and removing your bound fluid. And it's breaking up the fibroadipose fibrosclerosis in your adipose tissue. So it's got lots of benefits and you don't have to buy one, you can hire one. And that's why I, I actually have a great relationship with MediRent because of that ability 
for you to try before you buy. So now we'll go to the Q&A. Yeah. Uh, now, we've been trying to answer some of these as we go along, and hopefully we've been providing some answers to people. Um, I know Michelle's been waiting a while. She, when you uh, mentioned right at the start um, about the evidence for MLD um, maybe not being the answer for lipedema, um, she just wanted to know the reference for that, if that's at hand. Yeah, so there's quite a few references for that. You need to read all of um, Tobias Birch papers that are out there, the myths papers about should we be using MLD. Um, the one for lymphedema it is a 2021 paper, and I think it's the head author is De Vries. D-E, now I've got to write this down because um, I always get this wrong. So D-E, capital V, R-I-E-Z-E, -E, and I think it's a 2021 paper, the DeVries paper. It was, um, Nellie, Nellie came to our ALA conference this year and she was presenting on half of DeVries, but it's actually DeVries paper. Um, and if you've got the ALA um, journal, uh, the, the publication that comes through, you can actually have a look in that journal for any of the therapists. And it's actually got two page spread after the conference about that paper and the con controversies in it. But um, the research is speaking. We've got to listen to the research. We might not like it, but we've got to listen to it. Good stuff. Uh, there was a question there about cellulitis, which is a good one. We get that asked a lot. Um, she's asking on behalf of her mother um, who has cellulitis in one leg. So she's wondering yep. if she uses um, the pump on the other leg uh, and then uses it once the um, cellulitis yep. is cleared You up. need a therapist involved in that case. You must not be putting pumps on when you've got an active infection. You need to make sure that it is cellulitis. So cellulitis normally you get a temperature with it and you feel pretty unwell. A lot of people have got with lymphedema have got red legs. Red legs doesn't always mean cellulitis. It can mean inflammation there. So that's why you need a good therapist or a doctor diagnosing that appropriately. Sure, she can use a pump on the other leg. If there's no redness, then she's not going to spread infection in the non-affected leg. But we don't want a pump on until we're told we can. And that's normally after you've had your antibiotics and a cellulitis is very, very painful. You, you won't want a pump over that, um, but you need to get clearance as well from a therapist or a doctor to restart that pump after you've finished your antibiotics. And if they say it's not an infection, it's not that tender, you haven't got a temperature, it may be just inflammation, then a pump's really indicated to move that inflammatory um, type of fluid stagnation and it actually will bring the pinkness down so diagnosis is key with that for safety yeah and uh, I might add the nice thing about the pump with cellulitis is once you have started your antibiotics and things are a bit more under control you can dial it right down again um you yeah, know because if you've absolutely. got that pain and sensitivity uh, yeah. and that can help you get back into garments as well if if absolutely. you're wearing those as well absolutely uh, we answered a question, but it's a good one, um, just about people with lipedema who think they might have lymphedema and how can they tell? Um, yeah. They so if you've got lymphedema, you will have a change in your leg size over the day normally. So if you've got pure lipedema, you will press it, you will squeeze it. It won't have any indentations in it. And when I do the pitting test and squeeze, I follow Jen's wonderful research and I'm there for 30 seconds holding that as firmly as they'll tolerate and see if we can sink into that bound fluid as well. Um, so you've got to do your pitting test. You've got to get your um, therapists to see if it's there with their tools. But if you've got it yourself, you will notice a change over the days that my legs might become a lot harder and then I might wake up in the morning and they might be softer. You may see that there's no swelling in your feet and by the end of the day, your feet are swollen. You may see deep indentations from your clothing go on to you through your skin. Um, so you've got to actually look for those signs um, and, and get that assessed properly. Um, so it, it is different to pure lipedema. Yeah. 
Uh, there's a question there about buyer pants and whether they have chambers that can turn on and off. That's a quick, easy one that I can answer. Um, no, you can only turn that chamber off, the odd chamber on that LF900 or LX9 as it's also known. Um, lots of people are asking about where they can find a, an appropriate therapist. Oh, um, all sorts of places. Question. The <laughs> question. Now, I've been directing people to the ALA website and also to the New Zealand equivalent therapist listing to look for a therapist. Um, many lymphedema therapists also treat lipedema. There's also a question around, oh, my GP doesn't know much. Like, you know, who's the first point of call? So the, if you actually... Um, contact Lipedema Australia, they actually, they will have a list of therapists that are known from patients that have had ex great experience with a lymphedema therapist who has knowledge of lipedema. It is my goal to get a lipedema therapist list going somehow, somewhere. All right. It is my goal. I'm working on it. I'm always working on it. Um, but yeah, you can look at your ALA listing, you can put your postcode in, and for the rural people, you can even put a 500k radius on the ALA listing to find a therapist and give them a ring. How much lipedema have you done? Um, AL, the Lipedema Australia website is a really good resource um, to have a look at and see if you can get the names. Um, and look, if somebody, I was going to say about your rural people who are really, really stuck, if they're really, really stuck and they need somebody to guide them, I actually do telehealth for lipedema patients. Um, so if anybody rural can't get anybody to guide them, I'd be more, more than happy to help in that situation. I can't squeeze your legs through a screen, but we can guide you and we can do we can give you some safety considerations and point you in the right direction when there's no other option through telehealth. Great. There was a question around uh, diagnosis of lipedema and whether anything or any markers show up on a blood test or? Um... No, not yet. We are waiting for the biomarkers with bated breath. Um, I do get all my patients to go and have blood tests. I'm not, if people have heard that, I'm not looking for lipedema through a blood test. Um, you need lots of blood tests to, to take out other things that could be masquerading as lipedema. Um, but no, unfortunately, there's no magic blood test as yet. But watch this space. They are finding genes all the time. We thought it was going to be one gene. Unfortunately, we're finding, as we thought we would, um, over time, we're getting lots of different genes. So we can't have one biomarker yet. But one day, hopefully a genetic test or a blood test will become available for this disorder. You need a good therapist. And going back to the GPs, they don't know much about this condition. So if your GP is being a little bit difficult, it's not just your, your GP. It is not taught on the medical curriculum, something that we're trying to get changed. It's not taught on the physio curriculum. When I trained as a physio, it's a postgraduate qualification because it, compared to other things, it's a much rarer disorder. And we've got to remember as well that this disorder was only named and termed a disorder in 1948 to 1951 and it's only just gone on the ICD for classification of for a disease two years ago so in the scheme of things it's very very modern in medicine so educate your GPs the Lipedema Australia um, people have got lovely um, brochures that you can give out to your GPs and your doctors to educate them um, so yes that's the way to get around your GP. Good stuff. I'm conscious of the time there. I've seen two other questions that we're going to answer very quickly. Um, Sarah was wondering about a printout of the measuring guide. Um, Sarah, previously, we're always trying different things with our service, uh, but previously we found if we gave the measuring guide for garments to um, clinicians, they often would choose the wrong garments, not often, sometimes would choose the wrong garment size, uh, but inevitably we have to cover the cost of that, of, you know, things being altered and changed. So we've found the best way is that uh, if you guys provide measurements to our customer service, they're well trained in choosing the right garments um, and also having a discussion with you if there has to be a slight compromise uh, in the length of a garment or something like that. Um, but feel free to email me at nicola at medirent.com.au and we can talk about that further. And then the other question was, oh, um, should your legs be elevated when you use the pump? 
So you saw on all of those pictures that the ladies had their legs along the sofa. You need to have them at least um, horizontal. You don't have to have them elevated. I know a couple of patients that put them up because they like to have them up the sofa on some pillows. It's more comfortable, but you don't have to. But what you mustn't do is sit in a chair and try and bend your knee in the garment because it's going to cause a tourniquet around the back of the knee and you're not going to get the flow. So we like you on your sofa, leaning back a little bit. Remember, tummy raised, tummy up if possible, legs out. But if you want them slightly elevated and you want to lie down, you can do that as well, but you don't have to. Excellent. Okay, well, I think we might have to leave it there, um, but it's been a fantastic session. I really appreciate your time, Helen. Uh, I think everyone could talk about this for a long time. There's there's so many que more questions than answers sometimes, um, but at least uh, hopefully everyone's got a little bit out of this evening um, and some takeaway points as well. So thank you yeah. again. No problem. And if any of the questions didn't get answered tonight that are sitting there, um, send them through to me and I can email them back to you. We can try and get them back to the, the delegates that attended tonight. Excellent. Great. Thanks again. Thank you, everyone.